Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and today we're going to go over the butt wink and things to look out for. So if Jenny quite kindly demonstrates some horrible squats for us, she's gonna unrack the bar and she's going to try her best to try and make herself do the butt wink. There we go, that's what we want. See all this movement coming from her spine and her pelvis tucking underneath herself whenever she's doing her squats. You can imagine if I was to climb up on top of her shoulders right now and put extra weight through her, that's not a really a good position to be in. You do not want to be loading your spine and then moving your spine while it's under load. That's how a lot of injuries can happen. So if she just re-racks the bar for me, what people will generally um, search on the interwebs for, they'll generally come across um, saying that it is their hamstrings to blame for this and that their hamstrings are pulling the butt under. It can be part of a very, very bigger picture. You should have really good overall hip mobility for a squat anyway, but um, just blaming the hamstrings. If you can just touch your toes with nice straight legs, hamstrings are probably fine for you to be able to get into a nice and um, good squat position okay so if you're say you're above your knees then yeah you probably need to stretch your hamstrings a bit but if you're able to touch the toes then it might not be your hamstrings that much it might be your actual technique and you cannot outstretch bad technique okay so the things that you actually want to be doing is starting to work on your squat and filming it from the side i cannot stress this enough use your phone and set it up somewhere with a front facing camera that you can see yourself as you squat so what we're going to do with jenny here is get her to unwrap the bar again and we're gonna see where we can sort of start to make corrections in. so one of the big things is, so this is a very very quick fix I've done this I don't know how many times with people they misinterpret the cue of sending their hips back and see how Jenny has a really good brace position if she goes back again she's a really good brace position but she, her lower abs are on she's ready to squat and what people do is then switch their lower abs off and answer your tilted pelvis and then start to go for the squat and what you can see there is she actually created that motion up there before she even went for the squat. So because she unhinged everything, then her hips have to come back under on the way down. Whereas if she just braces and maintains and sinks herself down into her hips, the hips, yes, go back, beautiful, and then back up again. Okay, so that's the difference. Whereas again, we'll do one more. She untucks, boom. This is what people do when they think about sending the hips back. They unload everything and then go into that bow position. That was quite a low one there. So what you want to do is think about your bracing technique first of all. Everything has to be boom, locked down, and it's all about the hips pulling you down into position. The hips can shoot back a bit depending on your leg length and stuff like that, but that's ideally what you want. You want to be loading your hips, not your spine, okay? Beautiful. So if you're fine and you're still getting that tuck on the way down, so this is going to be really hard for Jenny actually to do, so well done Jenny, it's really hard to do to do things wrong. What you want to do if you're starting to see that tuck happen, so Jenny's going to do a really slow squat for me, and as soon as I start to see, pause, 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 so I started to see movement in her lower back, I make her come up a bit, fix it, and then start to go down, again, pause, 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 there, back up, back down, and then pause, and pause in this bottom position, if you can catch that neutral position, pause and hold, grab the ground of your toes, feel strong there, and then she brings herself back up nice and slowly, we'll give Jenny a break for a second, you want to start to make yourself feel strong in those bottom positions. Fix it, feel where it is, and figure out where your own neutral position is. Now, the other thing is as well here, if Jenny um, goes down into a nice low position squat for me, she's able to get down to the bottom. If you're unloaded, this is absolutely fine. You can round your back in a squat, you can sit there and you can chill out. But what you need to make sure that you find is your actual active squat. So again, if we get Jenny to come back up, she knows quite well where she would need to cut her depth, okay? Not everyone is designed to be able to squat ass to grass, I'm sorry. Even if you work on your mobility to death, you may not ever get to an ass to grass position squat with weight, okay? So it's very important that you basically respect your spine and do the best squat that you can load. And if you only just happen to break parallel that little bit, that's absolutely fine. Don't be trying to chase something that may not work for you. You'll probably find if Jenny goes into your front squat for me, she grabs the bar, thank you. Um, from there, you'll probably find that you're able to get into a lower position with a more neutral spine just because of where the weight is. So her front squat is, I would say, a little bit lower than what her back squat would be, and there's no technique suffering going on there. So if you're looking to get deeper into your squat position, your front squat's probably gonna be a nicer position to be into, okay? So the back squat is if you're noticing your um, butt wink happening in your back squat, then that is where you want to start to work on that. So again, film yourself on the side, see what's happening, get someone to spot you, and figure out where you can maintain that neutral spine position. 
If you're working through the technique work and you find you're not getting anywhere with it, then yes, it could be a mobility restriction. Do not get caught up with just the hamstrings. That is just one motion that your hips can do of flexion, forward flexions. You have to think about how your hips can move in their totality. So you have flexion of the hip, which is seeing how high you can get that up. You have extension of the hip, which is how far you can actually extend the hip. You have lateral movement with how the hips move, which goes side to side. You have abduction, which is going out. You have adduction, which is going across. You also have internal rotation of the hip and you have external rotation of the hip and if you're lacking the baseline level of any of those then that's what's going to make your knees cave in in your squat and you're going to run out of space and you're going to turn into a gargoyle when you're trying to squat and we don't want that so if you're struggling to understand what any of that stuff is pick up the simplicity mobility method it'll show you how to assess very easily all of those things and how to work on them it gives you the movements you need to work on so go and check that out if not then make sure you work on your technique perfect your squat so you know it so damn well that you can squat your face off and get really big legs not like me and Jenny because we have tiny legs but you can get really big legs if you put a bit of effort in and be more consistent with your squats we do like to skip leg day